here today to show you how to successfully print and cut every time in Silhouette Studio. So to get started, um, we want to go ahead and open up a new design page. <clears throat> and in Silhouette Studio, when you um, have the new page, typically if you have like a Cameo set up, it will come up to where it says automatic cameo here and the design page settings is this icon over here in the upper right it's a rectangle with the arrow pointing to the right on the top down on the on the left and if you hover over it it will say open the design page settings now don't be confused because i have some extra icons on my screen that you may not I currently have the, the business edition of the software, so I may have more icons than you do. But the design page settings is a icon that's in the basic version of the software. Once you click on design settings, you'll see the width and the height. I don't like to change these because I just don't. Um, I'd rather go to the box here and using this toggle switch, I'll drop down to where I see letter. Now most people, um, have an eight and a half by 11 printer, or if you're in the European market, it would be an A4 um, page size setting. So I choose the letter from this. If you do have a 12 by 12 printer, you could leave it at the Cameo. In other um, projects that you're doing beyond print and cut, it's not so important that you get the correct page size because you can just place the image on the mat wherever your paper is going to be. But in print and cut, it's very important that you select the correct paper size for your printer. Okay, this is again determined by your printer. So whatever your printer size is going to be, make sure you select that as your page size. And then I always leave the orientation as portrait. I just find that it prints better and works better. So if you have an image that's going to fit landscape this way on your page better than it will portrait wise, just rotate your image so that it fits in here. Don't change your page size. I also make sure my cutting mat is selected and that my show cut border is turned on. So these are all the things that I will set up when I'm in the design page window. I want to have the letter size selected. I want to have it on portrait. I want to make sure my mat is turned on and that I have cut border turned on. Once I have my design page settings set up, I will go to my registration marks window. And this is the icon in the upper right here. It's again a rectangle and it has four right angles in each of the corners. So on my registration marks window, it's important that I choose the correct style of registration marks for the machine I have. So if I have a Cameo or portrait machine, which most users do, this is the type of um, registration style I would choose. But if I have the original um, Silhouette machine or the SD machine, I would choose type two. It does make a difference, and if you choose the incorrect style for the type of machine you have, the, um, you will not have your registration marks read correctly when you go to print or uh, cut. So just make sure that it's the correct style. So in this type, I'm gonna choose type one. Um, a lot of times when you uh, have your um, registration marks turned on, some of these settings will be incorrect. And you don't necessarily need to remember what they are. Just remember to go to here to restore defaults. Um, one of the things that's typically off is that this um, thickness setting will be set to the highest. So when you um, hit restore defaults, it will pop it back down. And the thickness of your line will make a difference when you're um, machine is reading those registration marks. So be sure to turn it on to restore default. I would never change the location and placement of these top two registration marks. It will mess it up almost every single time. So even though that gives you the option to move them, I wouldn't. The only move one I would move if I have to 
is this bottom inset because there are some users whose printer will not print this bottom portion of the registration mark, in which case you could raise up the bottom one slightly in order to um, get it to be in the correct location for your printer. But typically, leaving it at restore defaults is going to give you the most successful, um, the most option, <laughs> opportunity to have a successful print and cut. For many of the users, simply restoring the defaults on your setting when you have a registration mark error will fix the problem that you have. So assuming you have the correct paper size selected, if you hit this restore defaults and try to print and then cut again, if you've had problems in the past, that may be all you need to do to fix the problem, okay? When you go to place your image, placing your image is really important because these crosshatch um, areas, while these will not print once you print your document, they are there as kind of a do not enter zone. So you want to place your image um, more in this area. So anything that's in this teal colored area is a great location for your image. So you can put your images just as tight and close as you want them within this area. However, um, when people uh, say that they um, their image is cutting off, it's slightly off and not cutting correctly around the image, it's almost always because part of their image is up here in this indented area. Sometimes it will cut correctly when an image is placed in this area, and sometimes it won't. But a lot of times when people think that they need to recalibrate their machine because when they do a print and cut, the image is slightly askew, it's usually because some part of some image is up here in this area. So to successfully get a print and cut every time, leave your images below this bottom part of the hash mark and in between your cut borders. Down here in the bottom corner uh, registration mark, it's not as particular. As long as you're keeping your image out of this crosshatch area, you can go down into this lower area all you want, okay? So I've put um, some images on my um, screen now, and I know that these are print and cut, um, and uh, before I go to print my image, these are all in the correct location, but before I go and print my um, image, I like to go to my cut settings window. Um, that's the icon over here that looks like the blade. Some people think it looks like a pencil with a cap on it. So in my cut settings window, I want to click on that just to make sure that my cut lines are activated before I print. If for some reason the cut lines weren't activated and I print it and I have to alter the image, it's sometimes um, likely that you could just move your image just the slightest bit and get it out of alignment with where it printed. And so to make sure that that's not a problem, just check and make sure your cut settings are um, correct. Now, when you don't have an image selected, okay, and this is something that confuses people often, is under cut style, it will say no cut. Once you select the image, it will tell you and show you, um, it will jump over here and show you that this image is set cut to cut. You know, though, that when you go to your cut settings window and the lines turn darker red, any line that's turned darker red is set um, correctly to cut. So even if the image isn't selected when you go to cut set windy, win, the cut set window and you don't see um, cut, you just see this no cut, don't let it confuse you. What you really want to notice is if your lines get darker red because anything that gets darker red is set to cut. So you just want to make sure that that is correct. Um, I did have somebody um, ask me the question about the line um, weight here. If you were cutting words and you filled the words with color and you wanted them to print, you'd have to print the lines of selected shapes and change this line thickness. Since these are images that I've purchased from the design store that are print and cut images, 
I don't need to change any of these things. Okay. So I just check my cut settings and make sure that they're on. So once I've gone to my design page settings and set the correct paper size, I've turned on my registration marks and restored the defaults. I've placed my image in the correct location and I've checked my cut settings to make sure they're turned on. Then and only then will I send my image to print and I can just go up here to my send to printer button and select the printer. Um, Silhouette Studio reads the default uh, print settings for whatever printer that you have selected. So all of the all of the options within the printer window are determined by the printer files as read by um, Windows or um, Apple. So Silhouette Studio software doesn't control that at all. It just reads whatever those print files say there. So that all the printing things are chosen by your particular printer, whatever you have there. Once you have your image selected and um, printed, you'll want to go ahead and load it into your machine correctly. Okay. And when you load it into the Silhouette Cameo, uh, you want to make sure that the left edge of your cutting mat is lined up with the left edge of the short raised line on the bed of the Cameo machine. This is if you have the original Cameo, the white and gray one with the push buttons. You want to make sure the left edge of the mat is lined up against the left edge of that short raised line. If you're using the newer Cameo, the touch screen that's all white, you will want that left edge of your mat against the left edge of the bluish green line that's on the bed of the Cameo. If you're using a portrait machine, you could use either of the two uh, raised short lines on the left. I prefer the one furthest to the left and again I use the left edge of my mat against the left edge of the raised line and this is where I have seen the most successful cuts. However, every machine optical scanner is slightly different and so sometimes when you get registration mark uh, errors and it's just read the first error or the first mark and then you're getting the arrow uh, error message I'm sorry you'll want to unload your mat and assuming you know that all the settings in your document are correct that we've just gone through then you can just move your mat um, uh, slightly to the left or to the right it's most common with the original cameo machine the white and gray one to try and move your image slightly to the right of that line to see if you get a better read mark. If you're on the new touchscreen Cameo, try moving it slightly to the left of the line. But either way, try moving your mat slightly to the left or slightly to the right and reloading it to see if you get uh, the registration marks to read correctly. Once those registration marks, uh, you're, it's loaded correctly, the optical scanner on the Cameo we will read first this um, registration mark in the upper left corner. It will go down and read the registration in the bottom left. Then it will move over and read the registration in the upper right. The motor will then move back to the left, tap once, and then move over to your design and start the cutting process. This is um, all of the steps that, these are all the steps that you'll need to do in order to successfully print and cut every single time from Silhouette Studio. Um, <clears throat> one side note to notice, uh, to take note of, before you go to cut any of, uh, any print and cut, you'll wanna do a test cut on your um, paper that you're using for your print and cut. Print and cut, um, like so let me backtrack I'm sorry so if you're choosing printing on cardstock make sure that um, you know what those settings are for cardstock because as um, you may be aware not all cardstock is created equally so even though these are the settings that come up with cardstock 
um, that it may or may not work with your um, particular cardstock that you have or copy paper. If you need to test, you can test images here in this bottom area. This is a good place to put um, some type of image to test to see if you know what your um, to know what your cut settings are. You don't want to do the regular test cut because that will put a square up here in the upper left corner which may interfere with the reading of your registration marks. So prior to doing any of this be sure to understand what your uh, cut settings are and um, knowing cut settings is kind of a different different topic for a different day but um, you can look up information on that if you're confused at all about uh, which cut settings to use. Another thing to know is that if you are printing on any colored paper other than the lightest of cream, you may have difficulty in getting your registration marks to read correctly because the optical scanner on the Silhouette machine prefers the highest contrast between black and white. So if you are um, printing on any colored paper or any paper that maybe might have a different ref reflection or sheen to it or um, that just has a texture or something, what you might want to do is in these corners where the registration marks, use a plain white address label and lay it over the top. Stick it to the top in this area where these registration marks are going to print out so that when you send your paper through the printer, the registration marks will print on the white label and that will give you the biggest chance for success when you're using some of these alternative materials. So if you're cutting on a very high class photocop photographic paper or anything textured or colored, I would definitely use the um, use the um, mailing label trick. Also, if you're using an edible ink printer, I would print registration marks only on the white label with a normal printer and then use the edible ink printer to print the remainder of your images. Okay, and that will give you, again, the most success for your cuts. If you have any other questions, please leave me a comment and I'll ha be happy to answer them for you. Again, my name's Susan. I'm with Fur Frugal. Be sure to go to furfrugal.com and check out some of my other projects that I've done and uh, leave me a comment if you have any further question. Thanks and have a great day.